Hello everybody, it's Tim here again, here to do my review for Hellraiser Hellseeker, just to get this film in the frame here. Sorry, try to get it. Hellraiser Hellseeker, just the generic red face pinhead on the front. Alright, Hellraiser Hellseeker. Pinhead and his legion return to unleash hell on earth, but standing in his way is Kirsty, the only person who has defeated Pinhead in the past. That plot summary is total bullshit. Uh, the film is directed by Rick Boda. Uh, the film stars Dean Winters, Ashley Lawrence, Hellraiser Hell... Uh, I read the fucking title again on accident. Uh, and Doug Bradley as Pinhead. So, Dean Winters, Ashley Lawrence, and Doug Bradley as Pinhead. I've heard that this is Clive Barker's favorite sequel. I don't know why. Two's better than this one. But, anyway. So is five. And three, in my opinion. The problem with this film is it takes almost exact similar story structure to the last film. Uh, like the character that Dean Winters plays, Trevor, um, he was Kirsty's husband. He gets in a car wreck with her, um, and then uh, his wife, Kirsty, disappears. She's his wife. She disappears, and he wakes up in the hospital. And all through the movie, he has like a. This film has the problem. It's the, well, the difference between this film and the last one it was like a detective thriller. The last one was, and this film, it's a paranoid thriller. It's like the character's paranoid the whole time, and everybody's out to get him, and he has, like, dreams within dreams within dreams, and that fucking shit gets so old. You do get some decent scenes, though, like he, like, the fucking eel starts coming out of his mouth in his apartment, and his body starts jerking, and this big fucking eel starts coming out of his mouth. You get some decent stuff like that. A little CGI on the eel, though, it looks a little stupid in a couple shots, but it looks pretty decent most of the time, in most of the shot. Um, or most of the scene, I mean. But yeah, the problem with this film is just too much dream within dream, and just the idea once again is this guy's in his own hell. And anybody seen anybody who's seen a couple of horror films would know automatically that this motherfucker is already dead. He's already in his own hell. Um, you find out at the end of the film that's actually Kirsty who killed him. That he wanted to get rid of his wife and like take the take her money that she was going to inherit, like her her father and uncle Frank. Uh, they had money like uh. They had money that they had stashed away, I guess, and after now they're dead, um, she's the sole beneficiary to it, and she's gonna. And if he kills her, he'll get the money. So he like uh, joins forces with his buddy at work, and they want to kill her off. And also, and also, he's cheating on her with three different women, <laughs> which automatically, once again, this character's an asshole, just like the character from the last one. But this character is even more of an asshole to me because he actually wants to kill his wife. But we're pretty close. <clears throat> But at the same time, uh, he's already in his own hell. He's already dead. You can figure that out in two seconds. And once again, he's already in his own hell, just like the character from the last movie. So it's the same shit, different day. It's the same thing, almost. Almost the same thing. You get like the similar vibe to it, except this film is like a paranoid type movie with the character being really paranoid all the time and seeing shit that appears and then disappears. Like, he has no memory in the film. For some reason, he has no memory in hell, even though he, it's technically his spirit but he has no memory in hell because his physical body's dead why he has no memory i guess that could be one of the punishments in his own hell is like he just has no memory and just keeps he could keep uh i think it, it's kind of interesting if he like has no memory and even though he finds out at the end that he's actually the one that's dead not his wife that he just like wakes up again with the amnesia all over again and just relives and redoes these events all over again for eternity that's what i kind of the idea i got that might be happening <laughs> but uh but you never know. I guess the amnesia could just be one of his punishments in hell or just part of his own hell that uh, has been created for him by Leviathan or the Cenobites or whoever the fuck molds these things together based on whatever particular person. <clears throat> but um, there's not really – the scares in the film, like I've said, are dreams within dreams. You get the ill thing, which is okay. And you keep seeing this woman. Um, she's a doctor. And he keeps seeing her through the whole movie, and she's, like, really kind and friendly towards him. And then you find out at the end she's actually, like, a woman that's, like, talking to his corpse. Uh, <laughs> who's like there at the scene uh, of the crime or whatever or his death and she's like talking to his body and that's who he's seeing in hell for some reason like as a kind person to him that kind of didn't feel like Hellraiser to me really but it's there uh, <laughs> that was that was okay I guess um, but like he'll have a he'll have a he'll be like he's like at work in one of the part one at one point in the movie he's at work he works at some kind of computer place or tech place or something he's at work and he like falls asleep <clears throat> at his desk or something like that, or just all at once looks up and he's in like he could be in a uh, whole different environment, or <laughs> or no, he'll like go home from work 
and then a bunch of crazy shit will happen to him. Then he'll wake back up at work. So, you know, it's like <laughs> dreams within dreams. I, that shit gets old fast, fucking quick. Dean Winters in the film, he's all right, but he has, like, the same look on his face in the entire film, almost like nothing phases this guy. And I'm like, okay, no, this shit would have me with a face like, Aah! but him, he's just like, this is all you got? <laughs> I mean, it's like nothing phases this dude. <coughs> <clears throat> Sorry, I got fucking choked there for a second, but <laughs> talking about once again a, a weak movie, I got choked again. But <clears throat> this fucking thing's choking the shit out of me. But anyway, uh, the film I wouldn't say is horrible. It just feels like been there, done that. Let's go ahead and say it. It's a two star film. It's just an, an okay film. It barely scratches okay away from just shit. Barely scratches okay. Uh, if you hadn't seen part five, I can see you kind of enjoying this one. One of the other things about it is that Kirsty's the one who killed him. Uh, she like opens the puzzle box and Pinhead's gonna take her, but he may, but she makes a deal with Pinhead that she'll deliver him five souls in exchange for her own. So she kills the five, the three women that you know her husband's fucking, and then kills uh, his partner. Although in Trevor's own hell, uh, his partner shoots himself. So I'm like, is that how he died in you know regular? The regular world, because I mean, wouldn't shouldn't Kirsty have been the one that killed him? Even if she drove him to suicide, does that even still count? Because wouldn't he automatically go to his own hell instead of being in Trevor's hell? Even or is he just a hallucination or what? I mean, or is he just like a figment that's part of Trevor's own hell? Fuck, I don't know. It doesn't go in too deep with it, but I think the film makes it kind of clear that she is the one that killed him uh, and killed, uh, or at least set him up to die. And we know for a fact she's the one that killed Trevor because it shows her, show her, show her, shows her blow his fucking brains out while they crash into the water. They have like the, they have the car accident, but instead of Trevor getting out, it's actually her that got out. And all through the movie, he can't find his wife's body, and he's like real paranoid that everybody's out to get him, the police and everybody. And there's this cop that's like real nice to him, but then there's his partner who's like a real dick to him. And it's like a metaphor of how people are like, to, all people are like two different people. And uh, often the movie gives you hints that uh, he may have been a bad person and shit like that. Like throws it directly in your face. So it's really easy to figure out that this guy has fucked up real bad in his life at some point. So we, we know something's going on. <clears throat> Most of the time with the scares and everything, they're just dreams within a dreams and shit like that. You get one kind of good scene. <clears throat> Once again, the pain and pleasure like uh, theme is almost completely gone. But you do get one scene that kind of brings it back a little bit. It feels really thrown in there where he's like having a nightmare and his doctor's like cut out part of his brain at the top. And they're like, we're helping you remember Trevor. And they take like a fucking needle and stick it into like a part of his brain. Uh, and they say that they're sticking it into a part that like uh, helps separate the part that feels pain and the part that feels pleasure. And uh, that was that was okay. This is an okay scene, but it feels thrown in there. Um, most of the well, most of the scenes in the movie is like we uh, see this guy like fucking around with different women and shit, like cheating on his wife. He's that this guy is like a chick magnet or something. He's fucking like multiple women or something like that. Out of that, they're all whores. I, it could be both. I don't know, but what, whatever. He's fucking all kinds of different women. Um, what I find funny is like uh, the movie tries to like scare you with certain things. Like uh, one minute he'll open the door, the next minute he'll like somebody'll knock on his door, he'll open it, nobody'll be there. Then he'll close the door, and then over there in his apartment is like you know, uh, one of the chicks he's fucking. I'm like, oh god. Hot chicks. Oh no, anything but that. That's so scary. I'm like, come on, movie. I need more of a fright than that. I'm I'm afraid of a lot of things, but you know, attractive women ain't one of them. I just tell you. But uh, I just find that funny. He's fucking his boss, and uh, he's also fucking uh, this woman is like an acro acupuncturist, I guess. How you say it? Uh, who, uh, who does acu uh, acupuncture? And she, he's fucking her, and he's also fucking this girl. It's like a few like apartments down or a few rooms down or something like that. <laughs> Um, he's fucking a lot of people. I'm surprised he ain't fucking his partner in the movie too, but I guess he doesn't, I guess he doesn't find him attractive, but whatever. Uh, it's pretty funny, uh, how he wakes up with, within dreams, within dream stuff. That shit kind of gets on your nerves after a while. At the end, we got kind of a, they, uh, at the end of the film, the, the cop, the good, they finally like, uh, they walk, well, they walk in on him, the cop does, when he's in there with like the, the body of the acupuncturist, she's in there dead. And, uh, fucking, the, the cop takes him, you know, to, takes him in for questioning about it, and they finally found a body, but he wants to know if it's Kirsty, and obviously we know it's his body. Well, they take him down there, that cop does, and then you find out that he, 
that him and the evil cop are actually like in the same body and like the fucking head of the evil cop comes like attached is like attached to the back of his head and like comes out like with a ten like attached to a tentacle or something like that that's attached to the good cop's head and they're talking about how everybody's made up of uh evil and good it's just a question of how much of each and then like the, the evil head looks down there at trevor and goes a little heavy on the evil <laughs> i thought that was funny he fucking like takes off and he goes into the morgue and in there is a uh, obviously pinhead well pinhead shows up pinhead scenes in this film are uh feel more part of the story than his scenes in part five did i think but uh there's he's not really the only cinnabon in this film you get a few little you know, like one little appearance towards the end of the other, like, other, like, two Cenobites, I think, or three, but they're just so thrown in there, and you blink and you'll miss them. They're pretty worthless, all the other Cenobites are. Pinhead's really the only one that gets any limelight in this one. Um, but you get a cool scene where, uh, Trevor's, like, first at the acupuncture woman's place, and, uh, Pinhead, like, comes out of this fucking picture or whatever, like, comes straight through it. Uh, it's a pretty cool special effect, pretty neatly done. He takes, like, a a fucking uh, pen, I guess, or needle or whatever, and goes up to the Trevor and, like, it extends the uh, pen does or needle, and uh, he sticks it, like, through the back of Trevor's throat, and uh, he's looking at him, and he's like, uh, what do you prefer, Trevor, the pain or the pleasure? And he's like, personally, I prefer pain. <laughs> and, of course, Trevor wakes up, you know, dreaming in a dream. That was a pretty cool pinhead scene, and you get Doug Bradley playing two people in the film. Um, he also plays the guy who, like, sells uh, Trevor the puzzle box that he can... One thing is, like, so fucking stupid. He wants to use the puzzle box to kill Kirsty to get rid of her. And, <laughs> all right, Kirsty's been through a lot. Maybe I can, uh, I can... I mean, they go all the way with, like, the idea of her turning, like, psychotic and killing Trevor and all that. They go all the way with the idea of making Kirsty a darker character. Um, and maybe I can believe after all she's been through that she might snap. But the way they go about it, like... Um, getting her to that position is, like, really fucking stupid because Trevor gives her the puzzle box, right? I don't give a fuck how much she's been through, how much at all she's been through, no matter how bad it was. There ain't no fucking way that once he gave her that puzzle box that she was going to open it like she does in the movie. No fucking way. She opens it and Pinhead shows up and she's like, you guess she's got a look on her face like, oh, no, not you again. And I'm like, what the fuck did you think was going to happen? Why did you open the fucking box? That is so stupid. I, that is such an ignorant way of getting her and Pinhead to face off again. That's so fucking stupid. And another thing, you got Ashley Lawrence back. I feel like they just wasted her. The idea of, like a, of a story about her turning darker or darker character could be interesting, but she's hardly in the fucking movie. Why get her back and not do the whole movie about her? She's a part of the story, but I would have rather have seen the whole movie about her than kind of a retread story of part five. Let's go ahead. And, uh, but back to the fucking ending here. Um, so he finds out he's dead, and he finds out he's one of the souls that was sacrificed um, for the deal with Pinhead. Kirsty gives him five souls in exchange for him letting her go. So he's dead, um, and then Kirsty's pretty much at the scene, and the uh, the the good cop who also Trevor kept seeing in his hell is also there talking to Kirsty. We find out he's actually a real person. He's talking to Kirsty and um he gives her the puzzle box that was supposed to have been like a wedding present or anniversary present that Trevor gave to her and he and she fucking takes it and walks off and that's cue in the movie. <laughs> it's not really much to this movie. This movie is incredibly predictable. It's not so much a horrible movie. It is the only movie in the franchise I've seen and I've seen it before five. I would probably be kinder to the movie, but as it is, it's just a two-star film, just a barely okay film. There's not really anything to it. It feels like a real retread after part five, and Kirsty's descent into darkness is mishandled with her actually opening the puzzle box for no fucking reason. That is so fucking stupid. But, uh, I mean, why didn't she, if she knew the guy was fucking around on her, why open the puzzle box at all and take a risk on Pinhead killing her? I mean, why? She could have just threw the puzzle box down, told him to go fuck himself, and then got a divorce and split town. That's it. That's it. That's all. That's all she needed to do. But whatever. Um, I guess if you're a big fan of the first two and really want to see the Kirsty character come back, then you might, you well, you might enjoy seeing her here, but you also might have a problem with her descent into a darker character. You might not like that. Um, like I said, it could have worked even better. I, I, the idea of her turning into a darker character is interesting, but I don't feel like they play it in the right way or do it right. But it's still pretty interesting. Um, Dean Winters, he's okay. Uh, 
he, his acting is not as good as Craig Schaefer's from the last film. And just his character alone, how he never changes his facial expression, regardless of how fucked up something is that's happening to him. And you had an interesting scene, though, where he goes back to the place where he bought the puzzle box. And uh, he sees, uh, like, a reflection in the water, like a puddle, and he sees Pinhead there. And he's, like, uh, t uh, fucking talking about, uh, he's telling Pinhead that he's the one, he thinks he's the one that killed everybody. And uh, Pinhead's like, the killer is amongst us. And all at once, Pinhead's flexion, reflection uh, disappears in the puddle, and Trevor's looking down there, and he sees his reflection. And I'm like, okay, the movie's trying to get you to think that he might be the killer and the one that did everything. But it's actually Kirsty. And I'm like, why would... Why would that – like it doesn't work because it's so forced in your face that uh, that this character is like obviously an asshole because all through the movie they talk about, you know, Trevor, maybe you're not the nice guy you thought you were. And I'm like, oh. obviously this guy has been a dick at some point in his life, okay? Obviously at some point. But <laughs> – I guess I thought the big epic twist would be that Kirsty's the killer, but that is kind of a twist. I mean, you wouldn't expect that see, after seeing the first two films. But at the same time, the idea of her actually opening the puzzle box to get in this position is so fucking stupid, it's unbelievable. But um, all in all, this is only a barely okay film. Um, it's not an absolute horrible film. It's got some cool scenes in it, like... Uh, like Trevor would be looking on... We were watching his uh, camera, like a video that he recorded, and he'll be watching it. And uh, fucking, the, he'll be like fucking some chick on it, and then all at once the Cenobites will appear and start like wrapping her face in a plastic bag or some shit, and that's kind of interesting. Um, this film isn't really, I'd say, shitty. It's just dull and feels kind of uninspired. After part five, it feels like, you know, been there, done that, same shit, different day. Um, if you hadn't seen part five, I would recommend watching this. If you have seen part five, I'd recommend, if you're a fan, check this one out. If you're a fan, I would say check this one out. If you're not a fan, um... Maybe watch only. Uh, if you're not a fan of Hellraiser, I would say, I would say, watch the other ones before you see this one. Is what I would say. Watch the other ones, uh, except four. Except four. It's better than four. It's better than Bloodline. Um, it's better than Bloodline only because Bloodline had so much potential and just got destroyed by the studio. Just got fucking destroyed. But uh, it's better than Bloodline. It's weaker than all the other films I've seen up until now. Um, I don't know if it's better than the films that's come after it. I know it's better than Hell World, and I know it's better than Revelation. I know that for a fact, and I ain't even seen that one. But, um, but this film is okay, like I've said. There's nothing really to it. Nothing absolutely, nothing absolutely horrible, truly horrible about it. But there's just nothing to it. There's nothing here. The franchise feels like it's... Feels like once you get to the point in the franchise where you're repeating the same exact kind of story and style of the last movie, or similar, almost same story of the last movie and almost same style of the last movie, then you know you're running out of steam. You know you're getting to the point where you're about out of ideas there. The movie's directed well. It looks good for, I mean, it looks good uh, look wise, and there ain't really nothing bad about it. Um, you get a jump scare where Trevor's like at a snack machine at work and a fucking hand like. A wet hand uh, hits the comes through the snack machine or whatever, like hits the front of it. Um, and like 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 a wet hand is like inside the snack machine and like slams its way towards him while he's like getting a fucking soda or something. And that was okay, jump scare or whatever. But uh, <laughs> really, there's really nothing to this film. The scares are just kind of well dreams within dreams, so you get used to them after a while. So you're like, I guess he's dreaming. Well, bam, he's awake. Okay, fucking point. What? <laughs> There's like a really silly scene where he's at the police station and he looks over there and like one of the police officers is sitting there and he's like playing with a piece of paper and all at once he like does origami and makes it into a cube and I'm like, oh my god, origami, not that, please. <laughs> I'm like, okay. There is one funny scene though I like where he's like sitting at the police station he looks over and one of the cops is like beating the fucking shit out of this like a uh, guy they got there. They're like beating the fuck out of him, one of the cops is, and like blood shooting up towards the glass. That was okay. Um, if this is the only Hellraiser film you've ever seen, I can see you thinking this film is alright. But if you've seen one and two, uh, the inclusion of the Kirsty character here is kind of a letdown because she doesn't really do anything. She definitely doesn't have a real face off against Pinhead. Uh, why they didn't why they didn't just write a whole story around her, and just have her as the character we see all through the movie instead of Trevor? I don't know. Um, because the problem is is that you could have took Kirsty out of this movie and replaced her with any other character, no matter who it was. Uh, any other female character in this story would have worked exactly the same. 
exactly the same. <laughs> um, but whatever. I mean, it's okay. Like I've said, it's barely okay. I don't hate the movie, and I can watch it and be like, well, that's over. You know, not really inspired me in any way. Not really done anything for me. You know, it's over. That's pretty much it. Well. There's not really anything left to say about this movie. This movie doesn't really do anything new for the franchise. It breaks pretty much the same old ground as the last one. Um, attractive women in it, that's about it. <laughs> Other than that, um, story's just too similar to the last movie. It just feels uninspired. Uh, even with Kirsty added back in it, the whole idea of her becoming a darker character is kind of interesting. But the way it comes about with her actually opening the puzzle box again is just fucking stupid. Um, so I'll see you guys again with Hellraiser Debtor, which is the, st the stupidest fucking title I've ever heard for a film thus far. Debtor is just so fucking stupid of a title. But I'll see you guys again with that movie. And so until then, I'll see you guys again with Hellraiser 7, Hellraiser Debtor. Hello, uh, sorry about that little jump cut right there. But, uh, I just wanted to say for Hellraiser Hellseeker, I wanted to change my score from 2 to 2.5. Uh, I think it's actually a decent movie. It, once again... Um, it's, I still agree with all the problems I've stated in this video that I have with the film because they are all there. The reason I wanted to uh, change my score from two to two and a half is because right after, well, while I was doing this review, I started to think that maybe I was being a little bit too harsh on the film. And right after this review was done, I actually went and rewatched the film again. And yeah, the film's not as bad as I thought it was. What when we changed my mind on the film to give it actually a, a half a star extra instead of just the regular two that I wa was going to give it. It's because of the final scene of the movie. That one scene made me change my mind of this film. Just barely, just made me add a little bit more to this film. Barely. And made it get that half a star. Just <laughs> just squeezing it in there. Uh, the last scene of the film. Uh, like when they're zipping up Trevor's body in the body bag. Dean Winter's body or whatever. And uh, Kirst is there. And that cop's there. And he actually has the puzzle box where he was in the, the vehicle when it crashed into the into the water and he gives it and he say, says he was going to turn it in as evidence and but when she tells him that it was her anniversary present she he gives it to her and it's like you know even though she's managed to, to get away with all this that she still has to take the box with her and keep it with her and like pinhead's still going to come after her i like that little eeriness of the ending there uh i'll be honest when i watched this uh for the first time before i did the review i kind of missed that once everything was over and done i was like oh psh, retread of inferno it, fuck this you know into, into this, just, you know, turn it off. I didn't even pay attention to that last scene, I'll be honest, but after watching the film again and paying, you know, full, most 100% attention to every single detail in the film, the film still has every single one of the problems. I thought about doing this review over again, but I didn't because after watching it again, I still have every single one of the problems I had with it last time. But this just goes to show you that sometimes when you watch a film again, you can pick up on new stuff and change your mind slightly about the film. I still agree that it's not a very, it's not a good film. It's not at all. But it's, I'd still, I say that it's a decent film. A decent. Just barely scratches that extra half a star. So, all in all, I'd give it two and a half stars. Uh, it's, once again, it's directed well, but still, it's not a good film. Um, it's better than Deader, which I've already, I've watched already and did a review of, and, uh, I think from now on I'll probably watch each movie I'm doing a review of twice so I can get my, you know, full, uh, fucking, uh, give the film my full amount of attention and, uh, give it the final score. This is the only, this is the, uh, only the second time I've ever done this in a review. Uh, I don't remember what the other time was when I changed the score for a movie, but, but all in all, yeah, this is only a two and a half star film, which only makes it a decent film. It's once again has all the problems I've already stated. I was just a little bit too harsh on it because I didn't pay attention to the final scene. That one final scene with Kirsty and her getting the box back kind of made me like the film a little bit more, thinking, you know, Pinhead's going to still come after her. Uh, but other than that, other than that little final scene, I didn't pay attention to the first time, which is the only reason I wound up giving it two stars instead of two and a half. Just because I didn't pay attention to that scene because I was ready just to shut the movie off by then because it's so much of a retread. But still, I don't care too much for the film. I don't hate the film. I still think it's decent. But even as being a decent film, it's still too much like Inferno. Um, but yeah, just to end this, I'll uh, see you guys again. I'll see you guys again with my next Hellraiser review. I've already done uh, Deader. Um, it'll be up around the same time as this video. So I'll see you guys again with the fucking Hellraiser. Hell world.